Hello everybody, in this lesson, we're gonna be taking a look at parsing and converting dates in an R data frame. We're gonna be using this Lubridate package right here. You can use library and Lubridate to load in that package so that we can use it. We're gonna be using the exact same data set from our last lesson. If you haven't already gotten that from the GitHub, I'll have the GitHub below so you can go ahead and download it. And then we're gonna import it exactly as we have it right here. This is what our data frame looks like, and we're going to be specifically looking at this transaction date. In here, you can see we have a ton of different formats, and that's not a good thing. Uh, that is a bad thing, because if we want to use this, let's just say we wanted to use dates in order to create a line chart, so a time series plot or something like that. Well, if the data sits like this, it's not going to work. Or if you want to aggregate it on, or if you want to parse it out, or if you want to do anything, you can't really do that with how it sits right here. Now, this is a very exaggerated view of this. It normally doesn't look like this. But let's say, for example, you're pulling data from a database in two separate parts and you're putting it into one output and you're outputting it to a CSV. I've seen it a hundred times where you have two different types of transaction dates, ones like this and ones like this. And they both are technically dates and they're being stored, but they're being stored differently. And so this is something that we want to clean up and we want to standardize so they're all looking the same, the same format. And Lubridate is very helpful with this. And what we're gonna do is come right back here. We're going to run our code so that we pull in that data frame. And now we can start working with it. So we're gonna specify, we're gonna do data frame. The dollar sign is just a shortcut to specify our column. We're gonna choose our transaction date. Now, what we want to do is we want to first standardize all of them, and then later we're going to parse them out into day, month, year, whatever we want, because that can be very helpful as well. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use parse date, and let's see if it comes up right here, parse date time. This is from the Lubridate package, as you can see right here. And it basically is just a really helpful function to help standardize your dates. So let's go ahead and click on this. And we need to pass through as one of the uh, was one of our arguments. We need to pass through what column we're actually working on. But now we need to pass through orders. So for parse date time, this orders allows us to specify different formats that our dates are going to be in, and then it standardizes them for us. So we're going to say orders here. We're going to say that's equal to. Now let's make sure we have the soft wrap lines on, uh, just in case it gets long or we could just pull it down here. But what we need to do is we're going to pass through a vector and we just need to specify what different formats are we actually working with here? Because we have year, that's month and day, this one, and those are dashes. And then we have month, day, year with these forward slashes. And so we need to just kind of go through here and see what different formats we have and it'll standardize them. So let's do this first one, it's year, month and day with dashes in between them. So we're gonna do capital Y for the year, month and day. And of course, this needs to be within quotes. Let's make sure we get that. Let me go back, there we go. But let's put a quote right here and there we go. And now we can just do that and separate them by commas. Let's run this one actually. And let's come in here. And you'll see that now we have one, and those are all standardized and are all working correctly. We're getting a message down here saying seven failed to parse. This is just a message saying, hey, we did some of them correctly, but there's a bunch that didn't work correctly. And this is a very helpful hint for us. This is kind of a message that's saying, hey, you didn't get them all. So be sure to go back. Now, that isn't all of them. So let's reread our data frame since we overwrote that. Uh, but let's look at our data frame and let's do some of these other formats as well. So for that one, we're going to do a comma, and then we're going to say month, forward slash day, forward slash year. And then we'll look at another one. So let's come in here. We have another one with slashes or forward slashes, but this one is a different direction. We have year, month, and day. So let's make sure we get this one as well. So we'll do year, that's a forward slash month and day. Now, one thing, and this is just I just know this, is this right here isn't actually text. It is still a date, although it has text in it. It's still being stored as a date properly, but it has a different way it's displaying it. So on the back end, it could actually look like this, but it's displaying like this. So what we're gonna do is let's run this one and see what happens. 
and we got one that failed to parse. So let's come back here. So this Grace Adams is the only one that failed to parse. Let's come up here. Let's run this again and let's create a duplicate of this. We're just gonna do data frame raw and we're just gonna pass through the data frame just so we have it um, so we can compare. So we have our data frame raw and if we go back, the one that didn't work, and let's run this one more time, sorry about that. The one that didn't work was right here. So that's gonna be Grace Adams. Let's go through to Grace Adams and that's because this is a different format than up here. Again, this is year, month, day. This is day, month, and year with dashes. So let's come in here. We're gonna say day, dash month, dash year. And we just need to rerun our data frames so that we can rerun this one one more time. Let's go ahead and run this. And now we're not getting any error message. So now if we go and we look at our data frame, this looks just beautiful. I mean, that is a thing of beauty. Let's compare it to how it was before. And I'm just gonna go back and forth. You can see that this one is much more preferred, right? We now have everything in one format that we want. Now, after we get this, we can also parse these dates out. So let's get rid of this data frame raw. We don't need that anymore. Now we can take this transaction date and we can pull out the year, the month, and the day. And we can actually create new columns with this. So what we can do is we'll take data frame, but now we're not gonna do transaction date. We're gonna do transaction date underscore, let's do year. And then we're going to pass through. So for this new column, we're gonna take this transaction date, but we only want the month. So let's just make this month. And I actually said year here. So let's actually do year. This year is going to extract just the year from here, which is 2024 for all of them, I believe. And it's going to make its own column. And we can do this exact same thing with the month and, whoops, and the day. So we can say month here. And then we have a function that's month that's going to extract just the month. And then of course, we'll have one as well for day and we'll do day as well. So I'm gonna run both of these. And if we come up here and go all the way to the right, now we have this all broken out by the year, the month, and the day. And so Luberdate makes it really easy to standardize and work with these dates because there's a lot of different reasons why you would want to actually parse these out. It just depends on what you're using it for in the future. And so I hope that this was helpful. If you haven't already, I have a full R course where we'll dive a lot more into the data cleaning process. So if you want to check that out, I'll have a link down in the description as well as a coupon code if you would like to use that. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not already, be sure to like and subscribe. Subscribe and I will see you in the next lesson.